All right, joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence. Man, which steps back into the Bellator cage. Come up on July the 14th, Bellator 181, as he takes on Steve Garcia. It is Joe Warren. Joe, how's it going, man? Good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, you know, when I think about your fight coming up here, and, and, I, and I'm sure that this, this type of question has probably been asked you a lot leading up to this fight, but do you at all feel that people have kind of written you off, underestimating you, uh, you know, going into this fight? Yeah, you know, everybody, they always write you off when you lose. You're only as good as your last fight, you know, but this is a very comfortable situation for me. I've won three belts in Bellator. Uh, you know, I'm a Bell- Bellator family, man. I've been with Bellator forever. So, um, you know, this is just the first step. I don't even know this guy's name really that I'm fighting here. He's just a body they're putting in front of me for me to uh, beat the pants off this dude so I can move back and get my belt back, get an opportunity to beat the hell out of Dantes again. It's one of those matchups where it's kind of like it seems like this is what promoters love to do. The guy that's been around for a long time, that up and coming prospect. I mean, do you, do you all take that kind of as a slide of maybe that this kid is trying to make a name off you? Listen, the way people make names are they beat people like me. Okay, you got to beat the baddest man to be able to get your name out there. Okay, and that's kind of what I am. You know, I I started this bantamweight division at Bellator. I plan on finishing it. And the bottom line is. You know, I'm like a gatekeeper for Bellator. You know, if you want your name to be known in Bellator at Bantamweight, you got to come through me. And uh, I'm very, I'm very, you know, it's a very comfortable situation for me. You know, it's not, I'm not happy to be starting all over again, but you know, that's what happens, you know, um, in, in MMA. It's unpredictable sport, you know. So I should, I could have a belt right now, but I lost my last fight. And so now I'm back in the line again. So I'll, I'll beat the pants off of this dude. And then I'm coming to get my opportunity for that, to get my belt back, to beat the hell out of Dantes again. You know, there's a rubber match there that I want. Um, he caught me. He caught me when I was fighting, uh, you know, not training for him. I was training for, uh, you know, just to win fight. And, uh, you know, you're only as good as the evolution of the sport if you get better. And uh, this old man figured out some footwork so people are in big trouble. Gatekeeper is a term that I, I, it's something we hear in MMA all the time, but I kind of feel like it's not a term that you want to go be known as. I mean, does that term bother you at all? No, I don't give a shit. You know, the bottom line is, um, you know, we, we have a young studs coming up. And if you want to get a name, you always have to beat a name. You know how it goes. And, uh, yeah, you can look at it as a bad thing or not. But, um, you know, that's kind of what happens. You know, everybody that comes in the Bellator – that wants to get an opportunity to get a belt, they usually have to come through me, you know? So it's a, uh, it's, it's a comfortable situation for me. You know, um, I'm not really worried about it. You know, this is just a body for me to crush through so that we can be back in this, uh, this title hunt. 2016 wasn't the greatest of years for you in terms of, of win losses. So how would you describe 2016? Yeah, you know how it goes. It's, it's um, the most unpredictable thing you can do in, in, in the world is get into that cage. You know, you can you can think you're the best in the world or you're the best prepared, and things happen. You know, I mean, um, I was uh, I, I had a belt and got caught in a knee bar. You know, and it was terrible. You know, should have had a rematch right away, and had to fight four matches back to get that rematch. I mean, to get my belt back, and then lost. You know, got, um, I lost against uh, Caldwell. It was my first time I got injured. First takedown, I dislocated my kneecap and tore my MCL. You know, so there's nothing I could do. I was stuck on the ground, you know, and so so that that sucks. But you take that one out of there. I lost to a tough opponent, Dantes. You know, he's probably one of the best in the in the business right now. Period. And uh, you know, he caught me. You know, I got him the first time. He got me the second time. Um, if I got to go to Brazil and and go to the you know go to his second job, the Brazilian steakhouse, and put up my green flag to whoop that dude's ass again, I will. You know, and. Uh, you know, this is just uh, this guy I'm fighting right now. I, get, I don't even remember his fucking name. You know, he, he's a tough, up-and-coming up kid. This is very normal for me. You know, um, if I had a problem with that, I probably wouldn't be fighting anymore. You know, I mean, the, this sport is a bunch of young studs, and they're looking to get their opportunity to become a big name in these organizations, and they have to big, beat a big name. So, um, good luck. Hope that dude has some insurance because I'm a wreck shop this week. 
if his name is, is Steve Garcia for uh, the fans that want to know what his name is. But uh, have you even watched any film with him, or is that just something that you have Mark do? Yeah, Mark does all my film watching. You know, uh, early in our career, I think Mark didn't want to w- want me to watch films because the guys I was fighting were technically so sound, they were scary to watch, you know. <laughs> but uh, me, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to being at this at a um, top level of competition. Um, I know he's under, uh, I don't, I think he's undefeated or I don't even know. I just, I know he's a young kid coming from Greg's camp. So he's prepared. But that being said, you can only be so prepared before you get in the cage with the baddest man. And I plan on, uh, performing, impressing myself and getting it and moving straight through this man. You mentioned, uh, about footwork earlier and that you now have footwork. Is that just something that as time has evolved that you and Mark have just been working on, you know, for the past couple of years and now it's, it's something that's click and all of a sudden now it's no, coming together? No, no. You know, the bottom line is I've been, I'm a wrestler. Uh, I was, um, you know, pretty flat footed, didn't move a lot, attacked your body and took you down. And Don says after I beat him and stole his belt, he, um, you know, he worked. He worked for three, four years on uh, just perfecting to beat me. I was fighting other men. I was not worried about what that person was. Got an opportunity, short notice, two months, and we fought him, and he, and he caught me. You know, he beat me. You know, and, uh, you know, what happened to us is you can, you can cry and retire, or you can reinvent yourself. That's what this sport's all about. You get left behind if you don't keep um, – evolving in this sport MMA and so we just hit the uh we watched some tapes we went right back to the drawing board and we switched the game up again so now I'm a new fighter I'm moving better um I have fast feet fast hands and so that's what we worked these last uh eight months was how to not get caught into a uh firefight with footwork so I just believe that I've evolved as a fighter again this is the most dangerous place you could have me is off a loss uh, you can look at records. You know, I always come back. I've won three belts before. I understand what this road is, and uh, I embrace it. You, you talk about this being a familiar situation. It's also a very familiar venue for you, the Windstar World Casino. Are you a superstitious guy at all? Do you, do you uh, Will you have the same type of routine just because you've been in this venue so many times? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's not a very big venue, but I love fighting there. Uh, they have great fans. They love having me there. I fought there so many times, six times, won belts there, lost belts there, been submitted there, submitted people there. There's nothing that hasn't happened to me in that, in that arena. And uh, so it's, it's a very comfortable situation again. You know, I'm back trying to fight to get that belt back again. They bring me back to the Windstar World Casino where I get an opportunity to perform in front of the crowd that loves me so much. It's just I'm not a superstitious guy. I'm a realist I understand fighting, understand what it means to get into that cage, understand how much, how much, how much uh, weighs on that win for me. So it's just kind of um, anxious right now, ready to uh, get there, weigh in and kick the shit out of this guy. I've been there. It's first off, it's a huge casino. If you park on the wrong side and you're trying to get to the hotel part, you're gonna be walking for a <laughs> yeah. long time. I made that mistake the first time and I went there. And they're building a big venue now, a big big arena there too. Yeah, and a lot of people go there. But uh, how do you see the victory coming for you here? I mean, is, do you just kind of do you see this as uh, you know what you're just gonna overwhelm overwhelm Steve Garcia and this fight's not making it out of the first round? Yeah, I mean that's exactly how I I see every every fight now. You know, I, I, I see myself as a finisher. I, um, this is, I'm a wrestler, bottom line. I'm not going to run from that anymore. You know, I'm going to win fights by using my hands to get to this guy's body, put him on the ground, and try to finish him with some elbows. Um, being, being a realist like I am, you, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So uh, if, I have to, if I revert back to what I'm great at wrestling, I believe I can dominate him there. If he wants to stand up and, and test this new footwork, then I'll be standing right in front of him ready for that also. So I'm not a very good prediction guy, but I know I'm be leaving that cage with my hand up. You mentioned about being a realist. Is it realistic in your mind that a victory here uh, gets you uh, that an, another fight with Dantas? You know what? Um, I hope so, but no. You know, um, I, it, they didn't even give me a rematch. I'm part of the – I'm a Bellator family man. I've been there since the beginning – Scott Coker's always said he'd take care of me. 
Um, you know, so it just sees we'll see what happens here. You know, the um, Dantes is a fight that is a rubber match that I'd like to have. You know, we've we, we both have a win there. Um, I see me having maybe having to go through Caldwell. Um, but you know, we didn't even get to that. That fight didn't even really happen. You know, I I was I got hurt right away. Uh, he's a great competitor, but I'll beat the pants off that kid too. Uh, these young studs, you know, they can. You better watch who you're talking to. You better watch. You better. They better watch what they're saying. You know, you think this this old man might. Have, you think that at my age is a problem? You better be uh, open minded to watch this old man come around the corner and beat your ass. And that's what is going to happen. So I'm, in, you know, re-energized, invigorated, ready for war. This is the most dangerous place you have me super confident and, ex- and excited. So um, I'm just looking forward to impressing myself next Friday. Joe, as always, I really appreciate your time. Of course, I'm very familiar with the podcast, but for my listeners that maybe are not familiar with your podcast, let them know uh, what it is oh, and where yeah. they can listen to it at. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you tune in to Podcast One. We're on Podcast One. We're the, uh, we're the only other uh, MMA podcast. Chael Sonnen has one. And we are Sean Funky and the Baddest Man on Podcast One. Tune in and hear us and listen. Uh, we always have some fun stuff to talk about. And um, we always talk about Bellator. So all you Bellator Nation, make sure you tune in. Sean Funky and the Baddest Man on Podcast One.